Welcome to the Chlorine King Podcast, where your host, Eric Taylor, will discuss tips for the do-it-yourselfer, answer listeners' questions, conduct product reviews, and host special guests from the pool industry. Grab your swimsuits and let's dive in. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Chlorine King Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Taylor. And I hope during the holidays you guys had time to relax with your family and uh, just kick back. But also, I hope you guys had some time to reflect on your business and wanted to see which direction you wanted to go this year and really refine your process. But tonight's episode is variable speed pool pumps. But before we get to that, we always answer a listener's question. So Derek sent us this. He says, Eric, can you give us a course on plumbing 101? I'd like to know how to effectively replumb a pad what types of fittings to use and when, how to fix pumps that were previously installed awkwardly, and how to make things as efficient as possible. We follow you on Instagram and the pads you rebuild are always clean, minimal, and very efficient. Well, thanks for noticing, Derek, and I'm glad you follow us on Instagram. We're always putting pictures of our uh, equipment installations on there, so we're excited that uh, people look at it but also take note of things. So this is an actual... Plumbing 101, I was going to devote an entire episode to, so stay tuned for next episode. But in the meantime, I can give you some pointers uh, to get you going in the right direction. The first thing I would always say is read the manuals and install everything to manufacturer recommendations. I constantly see pool pumps installed against manufacturer recommendations. The two biggest things I see is not allowing the pump to breathe. And what I mean by that is they put the motor right up against the wall. I know most pumps require at least three inches of wall clearance so it has room to breathe uh, because if it doesn't breathe, it's going to overheat and then kill its, uh, you know, shorten its life quite a bit. Another thing I see, it's stated right in the manual as well. Uh, most pumps require a certain length of pipe going in and out of the pump. Uh, usually it's seven and a half inches for one and a half inch plumbing and usually 10 inches for two inch plumbing. It's usually five times the diameter of the pipe. I can't count how many times I see back to back 90s going straight into a pump and all that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely uh, make sure you're installing it to manufacturer recommendations. And also my theory on when I'm rebuilding systems is the quickest way between two points is a straight line. So you don't you want to eliminate as many unnecessary bends uh, and curves and circles and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I've seen it all uh, when I go to replace equipment. You got to think too, each fitting has a certain amount of resistance. So for instance, a two inch 90 has almost nine feet of resistance that you'd get in a straight piece of pipe. So if you have a back to back 90, there's almost 18 feet of resistance uh, there that the water's having to push through, which you can see can get carried away very quickly and just ruin the efficiency of the system. So just take notes of those things and then also stay tuned for next episode. I hope that answers your question a little bit and guides you in the right direction. So moving on to our main topic of variable speed pool pumps, we're gonna go over what are variable speed pool pumps, why variable speed, the affinity pool pump law, we're gonna go over that briefly and explain what that is. And we're also gonna go over the return on investment you can expect by going with a variable speed pump. So what is a variable speed pump? A variable speed pool pump is a relatively new technology that allows the pump to run using a lot less power. Think of it as your standard pool pump, but with the dimmer switch. Single speed pumps can only run at one speed of 3,450 RPMs or revolutions per minute and can only turn on and off. That's it, on, off, on, off. There's no ability to change the speed of it. Oftentimes, single speed pumps have a shorter life when you compare them to the variable speed counterpart, and that's because it's running all day long at full speed. Also, you have to make sure you size your other equipment correctly to make sure you're not causing premature wear with variable or with single speed pumps. Variable speed pumps, you can virtually make with any system within reason, of course. Another thing you have to worry about is the runtime. The reason for this is because 3,450 RPMs all day long is overkill for most pools. You can usually achieve the recommended turnover rate of one and a half times in a residential pool in a very short period of time with a single speed pump. That sounds great though, right? Not so quick. 
The key to keeping your pool clean and clear is by having the water circulate. So cutting down the runtime on the uh, very, uh, single speed is not the answer. When the water's moving is when it's being treated by the chemicals. The water, simply the water circulating is helping keep the pool algae free. It's gonna uh, go through the filter to be cleaned and gives algae a lot less time to be able to grow due to water stagnation. So we need to keep the single speed pump running longer than necessary to prevent those issues, especially during the summertime when people are using the pool. And that's where the variable speed pool pump comes in to save the day. The variable speed pump allows us to manipulate not only the runtime, but also the speed at which it runs. For the first time, we are now able to control how our pool pump runs. Because of this, we can dial in not only the perfect turnover rate, maximize runtime to keep the algae gone, but also save us money to boot. Sounds too good to be true? It's not, and we have the science to back it up. Another awesome perk is the uh, lower you run, the, the quieter it is. So now your neighbors will love you too. You may even get some cooked meals uh, as a thank you from them, so it's really a win-win. So is variable speed pool pumps piquing your interest? If not, let me help you a little bit more. So why variable speed pool pumps, do you ask? The real question is why not? There are so many perks to installing one to upgrade how your pool circulates its water. Technology is something this industry has been dying for because as time goes on and on, the usage of power just keeps getting more and more expensive. And there's a rumor going around that by 2021, it's going to be a mandate where pool pumps have to be variable speed just because of the energy savings. And I'm all for that. And you should be too. And hopefully we can get you to understand why uh, with a couple reasons here. The first one is they save a ton of energy. Yes, that means you're going to be saving a lot of money too. I have some resources on my website that show you exactly how much money you can save by installing one of these. So head over to chloriniekingpools.com to check that out. Essentially, the watered down version is you're going to be able to run the pump at a lot less RPMs. And as we discussed before, that's where you're going to save your power. And because of that, you're going to be saving a ton of money. And this is what yields your power savings each month. How would you like to save up to 90% of the energy you're currently using to power your pool pump? Well, let's install a variable speed pool pump then. A lot of people don't understand that the variable speed pool pump, I'm sorry, single speed pool pump is the second largest energy consumer in the household below your air conditioning unit. In fact, it pulls more energy than all your other appliances combined. So how is that for power consumption? We can cut that down greatly. Another reason for a variable speed pool pump is they will last longer. And because of this, it'll save you money in another way. Single speed pumps cost anywhere from 600 to 800, if not more, to install and generally lasts every three to five years. And by installing a variable speed pool pump, we're able to cut back how many times you have to put a new pump in. And the reason behind this is simple, wear and tear. The single speed pump running at 3450 is running full speed all day long. In some days, it can be up to 12 hours depending on your climate. With variable speed pool pumps, we can reduce the strain on the motor in RPMs by 40 to 60%. So which one do you think is going to last longer? My car has a pedometer that goes up to 140 miles an hour, but I know my car will last longer if I drive it 50 miles an hour than if I drive it 140 miles per hour the entire time I'm driving it. The next reason is your pool and equipment will thank you. And this one lost me a little bit, so let me explain. Let's think about this. Your pool is going to thank you because the water is going to be circulating a lot more as far as a runtime and be able to eliminate things like bacteria, other contaminants much easier because the water's moving. Now remember with variable speed pool pumps, we lower the speed but increase the runtime. And remember the circulation of the water is what keeps the chemicals circulating to kill all those things. Do you have your filter? Yeah, this is not gonna have a lot of water, water rushing through it anymore. So now it's gonna be able to filter better than it did before. And do you have a heater? Yep, you guessed it. The water's gonna heat better now because it's gonna stay in the exchange longer than it did before. And this is particularly true for solar heating options. And the list just goes on and on. Another reason, it can be a safety device. Now how can it be considered a safety device? Well, there's one of two ways. First, because the water's running at a much lower speed, the chances of entrapments are diminished greatly. Not to say this still couldn't happen, but if you're running the pump at 40 to 60% less power or RPMs, it may save a life on that alone. And the second, and more importantly, there's some pumps out there that have a, an SVRS system or suction vacuum release system feature built in. 
And what this does is the pump sets in, senses an obstruction, like someone stuck to a drain or vac line for instance, it shuts off in two seconds, and that technology is awesome. So what else could you really want out of a pool pump? The single speed options just don't offer these types of benefits. The next thing I'd like to talk about briefly is the pool pump affinity law and how it creates the magic with the variable speed pool pump as far as the money savings go. And the reason for this is again because of the reduced motor speeds we mentioned before. And even though you reduce the flow rate, you're cutting the power consumption drastically. I have a couple charts on my website that show you know, the samples at different speeds or RPMs and the power you save. And one thing that's very uh, huge or sticks out to me is, as we mentioned before, the single speed pool pump runs at 3450 from the time it's on to the time that it's off. And that consumes roughly 2000 watts of power. If we cut that back just to 3000 RPMs, which is no appreciable difference, you can't really notice it when the pool's on, we're cutting the power back down to just over 1100 watts. So cutting it down just by 400 RPMs is uh, saving nearly 50% of the power just there. And then as we get lower and lower, it just keeps saving the power. In fact, when we drop it down to 1200 RPMs, we're only using 74 watts of power. That's incredible. And the pool pump affinity law shows all the, how all this is possible between three main components motor speed, flow rates, and energy consumption. Most of the savings is from the reduction of the speed in RPMs as I just talked about. Even though there's some uh, savings because of how efficient the permanent magnet motor is. And one would think if you cut the speed in half, you also cut the power in half. However, we just talked about they'd be terribly mistaken. According to the law, what actually happens is when you cut the power by half, you also cut the flow by half, but that's where the similarities end. The power consumption drops at a different rate, which is non-linear, it's an a-linear savings, than the other two. So in this example, you're actually reducing the power so drastically, you're using only about an eighth of the original power when you use a single speed after cutting the speed down in half by the variable speed. How awesome is that? And you can see with the charts on the website that the slower you run, the more power you save exponentially. Again, this all equals money for you. So hopefully this helps a little bit with the, the affinity law for pool pumps and uh, hopefully it'll spark your guys' interest to take a closer look at it. The last thing I want to talk about tonight with variable speed pool, pool pumps is the return on investment. You know, when you're sitting out in front of a client trying to go over the pump options, they always want to go to the variable speed because you're if you're doing your job, you're explaining the benefits. But then when you give them the price, they sort of sit back and gas and and get upset or not upset necessarily but just sort of they can't believe that the pump costs twice as much as a single speed and then when you say well ma'am or sir this pump will literally pay for itself and they're like yeah right there's no way it'll pay for itself well let's use some science to prove otherwise there's no doubt that not only will it pay for itself in no time but it'll also make your clients money and what I mean by that is once it pays for itself every year after that you're literally the clients literally pocketing money so let's go ahead and show you how this works. Variable speed pool pumps are the first of its kind to use a permanent magnet motor technology. And because of this fact alone, they're gonna be saving money. How much? Around 30% or so simply because it's a more efficient motor. So that means that if you got a variable speed hooked up right next to a single speed, running the exact same speed for the exact same time, you can expect to see around a 30% savings. Now how cool is that? That's not even taking into consideration the fact that you can lower the RPMs to save, you, save them even more money. The really cool thing about this pump is, once you get it dialed in according to your system, for instance, there are some pieces of equipment that need to have a minimum flow rate in order to function. Some things like a heater, a salt cell, or something like a waterfall to name a few. All you have to do is dial the speed to whatever component of your pool requires the uh, highest amount of flow and you're golden. Anything above that is just wasted energy. And good luck trying to do that with a single speed pump. It's just not happening. Now, what I'm about to list here are some realistic annual savings you can expect to see when comparing the variable speed pumps versus a single speed two horsepower pump in a 20,000 gallon body of water. And these figures are based, so I'm gonna list you one uh, value and then another value, and they're based both on six and 12 hour runtimes respectively. 
So at 15 cents per kilowatt hour, you can expect to spend 620 to 1360 dollars more per year on a single speed pool pump, as with the example above. At 20 cents per kilowatt hour, you can expect to spend 825 to 1810 dollars more per year for the single speed pump. At 30 cents per kilowatt hour, you can expect to spend 1240 to $2,710 more per year for a single speed pump. And of course there's going to be slight variances based on your system, you know, such as your plumbing or hydraulics and other pieces of equipment. You can expect to see your variable speed pump pay for itself between years one and two. That's what Pentair has always told me and I'm getting that uh, same exact number resonated from the clients. Now if that is one of the best returns on investment that I know of on this planet. Then year after year, you're literally pocketing extra money. That's right, the pump is making the client's money. So check out uh, my website, I have a calculator on there again to allow you to totally customize um, you know, the calculation to see exactly how much you're gonna save by installing a variable speed pump. And then also if you go back on my episode list, I did uh, an episode with Fred Horowitz from Pentair regarding uh, energy efficiency, mainly about variable speed pool pumps, so check that out as well. So that's a wrap for tonight, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this. And if you guys don't know much about variable speed, I really hope it piqued your interest to learn a little bit more about it because it's really the best option uh, to, to help with your clients and educate them and make the best choice for them, even though it's a higher cost. But as we highlighted here in this episode, it really does pay them, pay them back and then they'll start basically pocketing money uh, from the energy savings. So stay tuned for our next episode. I appreciate you guys listening and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great night. That's all for tonight. And thanks for tuning in. Please send any comments or ideas, how to and guest appearance requests and product review suggestions to Eric at chloreneKingpools.com. Remember, if life piddles in your pool of dreams, just add some chlorine and keep swimming. See you next time.